organism needs to obtain energy. And it can do this by either using energy from the sun or by consuming another organism. The flow of energy between one organism and another through consumption is called the food chain. However, not all the energy from one organism is passed on to the other. Why? Well, we're about to find out. This video will look at energy loss in the food chain. Every food chain has a producer, which obtains food from the sun, a primary consumer, which feeds on the producer, a secondary consumer that feeds on the primary consumer, and a tertiary consumer that feeds on the secondary. But each stage has less energy than the last, and you're about to find out why. Producers are plants, typically. They gain energy from the sun and use it in photosynthesis to produce sugars, which they use for food. However, only 1-3% to of the sun's energy is converted by plants into organic matter. There are a number of reasons for this, such as 90% of the sun's energy is simply reflected back into space by clouds or dust, or is absorbed by the atmosphere, so it doesn't even get to the plant. Additionally, not all wavelengths of light can be absorbed and used by the plant. And light might not even fall on the chlorophyll in the plant's leaves, so it can't be used. Additionally, there may be a limiting factor of photosynthesis, such as there may be a low amount of carbon dioxide, or the temperature might be too extreme. Either way, the gross production, that is, the total quantity of energy that the plant uses to convert into organic matter, is relatively low. In fact, a further 20-50% to 50 of the energy converted is used in respiration, so very little can be stored. So when a primary consumer, such as this cricket, feeds on the plant, only 10% of the food stored in the plant is used by it for growth. The cricket does not obtain all the energy because, well, not all of the organism will be eaten by it, and there may be some parts that are eaten but can't be digested. So therefore, the energy in those can be obtained. Additionally, the cricket may use up energy in movement, which requires a lot of energy, as well as respiration, and directly from the body to the environment as heat. Although, these losses are higher in mammals and birds than in insects. So, once again, the cricket uses up a lot of energy, and therefore has a relatively low amount to offer. In fact, when a secondary consumer, such as this bearded dragon, decides to eat the primary consumer, only 20% is passed on from the cricket to the bearded dragon. It's not just the stage of the food chain in which the organism is on that affects how much energy is lost. By comparing our bearded dragon with this cat, we shall see the differences. For instance, age. The bearded dragon is much younger than the cat, therefore it will need to use a lot more energy to allow itself to grow. Therefore, it is losing a lot more energy than the cat, who is older, and therefore does not need to use as much energy in growth. Additionally, the cat is warm-blooded. Therefore, it will need to use more energy to regulate its body temperature, which means a lot more energy is lost as heat, while the bearded dragon is cold-blooded. So in order to regulate its body temperature, it only needs to stay under a source of heat when it's too cold and move away when it's too warm. Therefore, the bearded dragon obtains a lot more energy than the cat. So if the cat wants to choose between a warm-blooded mouse and a cold-blooded lizard, the lizard definitely offers more energy for it to the food chain.